All right, so we understand relative and absolute, and we understand that this class has a lot more functionalities, methods, that could be useful for us other than these ones I mentioned. And there's no point of me going through them. You could just press the dot and just read all of these paths. They're pretty straightforward as naming styles, and if ever you do control Q, get a description, go further. Now, what we wanna do is read this file, and I'm gonna show you how. So if you look at this input.txt, it's directly in our OOP folder, not inside our source, directly inside our OOP folder, and inside of it is just some random numbers, 23, 34, 43, on different lines, and the lining also matters. So let's go back to our code. So how would I do this? I need to first get access to that file. So first of all, let's clean up this little place. We don't really care for, uh, for an absolute path. There's no need for it. What I need to mention is the file name I'm looking for, input.txt, and that's again the extension. So here, one thing we could do, because we're directly there, we could directly just type in input.txt. We could also specify from this current location, find me input.txt, whichever way works for you. So again, we're just gonna make sure that the file exists. So we're gonna say file, um, does it exist as, in a, as a question here? If it exists, it will say true, otherwise it would say false. So let's run this quickly. And you can see here, true. So the file is there and is accessible. Good. Now, how do we read from this file? Well, we're gonna utilize our good old friendly friend, Scanner. Scanner allows us to scan any type of input. It doesn't always have to be the system.n input. It could be a file. So here we could say new scanner, and here we could specify a file, right? So now I have my scanner open on that file. You gotta remember that that file is kind of being restricted by us. Something that we don't know that works underneath the hood is that anything can only be accessed by one person. So a lot of times there's a copy of the file that's made so that we could access it so that at the same time someone else could access it. Let's not delve into that too much. But what this means is, now that I took access of that file, no one else could write to it at this moment. And sometimes possibly not read from it either. So one thing we need to do is at the end of all of this, we need to close our scanner. So basically it says, close the file, I don't wanna read it anymore. The same thing with any type of connection, right? So, to make sure that this happens and no issue happens, what I mean by this is, let's say if I do something that could throw an exception, scanner dot, um, let's see, let's see, get the next int. So notice here, there's three types of exception that could be thrown. If any of those exceptions get thrown, right? Well, my application will crash and I'll never reach this location. So something that we utilize is called a try with resource. When you do a try with resource, what you're doing is making sure that whatever the case being, it crashes or it works, this file will be closed at the end. Sorry, this file. So how do we do this? Let me erase this a little bit. So we say try. And inside the parentheses over here, we're going to put that scanner part. So I am trying with this type of object. And here I'll put my catches. And if it did correctly, it will eventually close. If it breaks, it will still close and so forth so on. So this try with resource is really important. Now, um, an example of something that this could throw, let's catch that. So if we do control Q on scanner, we could see that it could throw something called a file not found exception. So if the source is not found. So basically this file doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and do a catch. File, do you see it? Yes, I do. Exception. 
So here, if this exception happened, we could output do something file not found. And we could even specify the file and so forth, so on, blah, blah, blah. So let's just run it here. It's not going to throw any exception because we checked that the file exists, right? But what if I make a mistake inside the name? I run it and now we get this file not found, right? But again, this try with resource works out because either case, it will close that resource for us. This is why I haven't put scanner.close. We don't need to because it does it for us. It's a really useful tool. Anyway, this was an example. Now, let's say that the file actually exists. We're going to do something in it. So again, we're going to go through this file one by one, each line, and read it. So we could say while scanner dot has a next. So again, this is a next word. Maybe what we want to do is, um, let's see what other has do we got. We got patterns. We got a line. Let's do that. So while it has a new line, so while it has a line, so line one, two, and three, what we want to do is read that line. So uh, let's get a string. Let's say line. That's the scanner. I can't spell. Scanner. Get me the next line. If you don't remember the scanner, next line, lines, and so forth, so on, or next, uh, please go back to the previous videos. But for now, we grab that line. Let's print out that line. So line, uh, well, let's just print it out directly. Line. And when it does the next line, it'll move to the next place. Then we check, has it another line? If it does, grab it, then move to the next, has it another line, and so forth, so on. So when we run this, we should see each one of those values as we saw. Okay. So this is the easiest way to do um, to read a file where we're reading every new line character. Now, what is these new line characters? Actually, sorry, let me open it from here. Do 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 do. I'm gonna open this in Explorer. So. Right click on that. We're going to go to Notepad. Now, these new line characters, we don't see it, but again, the binary is there. So if we want to see them, we could see it that we have them right here. CRLF is the binary code, let's say, that says a new line is there. Again, new lines don't exist in computer language. It's just some code that says this is a new line. So when it shows it, on a display, it could go to the next line, and that's all there is. So what we're looking for is these news, these new ones, and when we're finished with a line, we go, and eventually there's no more. When there's no more, we're at the end of the the file, and that's it, right? So this was to print one line at a time. I'll see you guys in the next video.